All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough crime. But we're going to have a show. And good morning. It is a uh, beautiful afternoon and good evening to wherever you are <laughs> and good night. We've covered all day parts. We do this show in the m- late morning on the West Coast of the United States. The West Coast, the best coast. But the reality is that we love our brothers and sisters in other parts of the country, and we know that other parts of the country are both frigid and unrelentingly stormy right now. We'll talk about that in just a second, um, just because it's a major news story. But there are other major news stories. There's a lot of politics. There's a big debate tonight. And then there's the uh, alternative debate. You know, the uh, uh, Donald Trump doesn't debate. I don't blame him. Hey, man, I'm 40 points. Po- Do you look at the polls? I'm 40 points ahead of you losers. I'm not going to get on the same stage with you. So I'm going to do a conversation with, you know, one of these softball throwing folks over at Fox News Channel. Ooh, it's a wild idea, but it just might it, work. It just might work. John Rothman is here today. Kim is here today. Wow. And Albert is here. Albert, thank you. Oh, wow. We are going to have an awesome show for you, so thank you for being here. There are few days I get more excited about than Wednesdays when Rothman comes through. A lot to ask Rothman about, and I'll tell you, I'm not going to softball it to Rothman. I hit him with the heat. I hit him with the real questions. You don't come here for namby-pamby stuff. You come here for the real S. It's the grit. It is. It's, it's the reality that Democrats may have to face. You know, the GOP has their own grim reality. They have to sling this BS about the election being stolen and how I'd pardon the last president, even though he literally led an insurrection, an overthrow. So they have their own crap, okay? How much of your soul can you sell? Right. The Democrats, their crap is a grim reality, which is that their guy, Joe Biden, Mm -hmm. has very low approval ratings. You know where I feel, where I stand on that and how I feel about that. Essentially, I think the days of presidents with huge approval ratings may be past us. I think we're into a new era with a tribalized, highly factionalized populace where you're just not going to see huge approval ratings for a president. I mean, I don't know what Biden could do to, I suppose if gas prices drop to some insanely low number, but there'd be GOP spin on that. Uh, Biden has nothing to do with gas prices because Biden really doesn't have anything to do with gas prices. So anyway, um, I don't know what magical scenario might result in higher approval numbers but and certainly biden is not a charismatic figure i will give you that i suppose just a dose of charisma would bump him a bit but all of that said i think the reasonable and this is the grim reality part the reasonable threat posed to joe biden not by donald trump but by third party candidates to derail essentially his likely victory over trump I think that's a real thing, and I think it's being minimized. I'll talk to John Rothman about it. So Mm -hmm. if it is just Biden-Trump, great, but it's not just Biden-Trump. In fact, the No Labels group, they just introduced Larry Hogan. That's not a surprise. His candidacy, these are now going to be third-party entries into the general. So... If you're looking for character, I mean, what says character more than Biden in a vet with the aviator sunglasses? Really? The dude takes a <laughs> takes a slick picture. And I'll give you something else. I mean, I think he's in better shape than I am. Yeah. Yeah, he's a tall, slim dude, and he works out, he bikes. You know, I'm telling you, he he's the problem is he's just not a charismatic fella. Now he's a 
get stuff done guy. He's got a solid administration. And the last thing I'll say, and then I'll move on. I want to get away from politics for a second because we're going to swing back to politics with uh, John Rothman. But the other thing I would say is remember, and this is an important thing to always remember, you're hiring an administration. You're hiring a group. You're hiring many competent people, okay? You want competent people in these positions of power. You want competent people in key cabinet posts. The last administration was filled with what? Incompetence. They were corrupt, they knew how to skim, but they didn't even do that well. Three of the top cabinet officials resigned, as you know, in total shame Mm -hmm. around allegations of corruption. I mean, demonstrable allegations of corruption. At EPA, twice I think at EPA, one at Interior. Wilbur Ross, who was at Commerce, he was absolutely, completely compromised, never divested himself the way he's supposed to of all of those holdings. He was Department of Commerce. I mean, you're supposed to divest yourself of those business holdings. So uh, uh, you're, buying that- admin- you're buying an administration. You're buying overall confidence. So you, c- confidence. So you could say, hey, um, you can put Joe Biden on life support. I don't care. I'm buying his cr- his crew, you know. I-, I get the fact that he's the head coach, but I'm buying the players on the field. So that's a little bit of how I see it. But uh, again, we'll talk more with Rothman about it. I- the Mark Thompson Show. I didn't mean to cut you off, Kim. Uh, what what did you uh, have? Oh, uh, I was gonna, I was going to ask you who was the the cabinet member of Trump's that resigned after spending a gazillion dollars on office furniture. Remember that one? They, a lot of them spent a gazillion. (laughs) I mean, a million was spent by, um, what's his name, Albert? The, um, he was housing and urban development. He ran for president, Ben Carson. Uh, That's who I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, he spent a million. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ben Carson was in it. I think, there's so much ego associated with this and so much it's tough for him to i think bow at the waist to trump although he did you know um and we could x-ray that trump administration i love the michael lewis book as you know that he wrote about the transition and um i think it's called uh, google it okay yeah it's not important anyway uh the nation is in the throes of winter albert I don't need to tell you this, Albert. You live it. You uh, work in the travel world. Albert, thank you. I don't want to reveal exactly what you do, but I know that you monitor flights and passenger movements across the nation. Isn't that fair to say, sir? Very closely, because that affects my day-to-day job. Yes. You know. Now, uh, I This job, wanted... fortunately, is unaffected, but we will talk about it here. Yes, we are unaffected. Um. I will mention, Albert, uh, that I will re-mention the fact that Boeing has huge issues, that Alaska Airlines door or plug that came off of that aircraft led to bigger questions that I detailed, I thought, pretty well, you know, when it comes to overall problems at Boeing with their fuselage and with their engineering, how they've taken old school engineering there's the shot of alaska airlines and that popped out at sixteen thousand feet if that had popped out just a little bit higher it would have been dunsville gonsville over for everybody yeah i'm not sure if they even found the door yet or that panel that's uh they, they, they found it in the backyard of a teacher in oregon yeah, they found that. And yesterday, did you hear they're saying that it might not have the the director of the NTSB said, "Listen, it might not have been that the um, bolts were loosened. They might not. There might not have been bolts there at all. We don't know." Oh my what? God. <laughs> what? Yeah, no right. bolts. I... There's never been anything like this. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. Amidst these issues, and of course they find more loose bolts, and they find more missing bolts, and they find, uh, and as I was saying yesterday, the assembly line on which they build the Boeing fuselage for these MAX jets is in Kansas, and it's had huge issues and questions around quality control. So you begin, if you look at the breadcrumb trail back to what's going on with these aircraft, you begin to realize, wow, these things aren't as safe as we think they are, 
And it's really just the law of averages, I guess, that generally protects us. <laughs> yeah, it's a real confidence builder. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, Albert, I thought of you because, you know, you're kind of a little bit in that world adjacent. Um, it, it changes. It messes up with our scheduling for sure, because a lot of those aircrafts, well, there was a full ground stop on all those aircrafts and mm -hmm. some airlines have a ton of them. So um, that exactly. probably made things a little pretty challenging the past few days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so meantime, as, a, as though that weren't tough enough to get from here to there, there's a major storm system moving through the country and it's producing some pretty sick effects. Here's a little bit of a setup on it. Dangerous blizzard intensifying over the Great Plains, dumping heavy snow from New Mexico to Iowa, making travel next to impossible, even <laughs> stranding semis. In Nebraska, conditions quickly deteriorating, with visibility reduced to less than a mile. As the storm advances toward the Midwest, two inches of snow could fall per hour with wind speeds nearing hurricane force levels. Oh my God. To the south, much of the Gulf Coast on high alert for tornadoes. Schools in the danger wow. zone closing early ahead of the threat. Fort Lauderdale recovering from a weekend tornado touching down and traveling for over a mile. Houston bracing for heavy winds ahead of the college football championships tonight. Meanwhile, the Northeast is digging out from its first major winter storm of the year. What do you think about all the snow that we got? Oh, that's too much. Worcester, Massachusetts, buried in overflow <laughs> wow. snow. Parts of oh, Pennsylvania seeing 15 inches. And now heavy rain threatening the region. New Jersey declaring a state of emergency ahead of the storm. This is one I would strongly, strongly, strongly encourage folks to not uh, underestimate. All right, Kathy Park joins us now live from Worcester, Massachusetts. I don't need Kathy, but thank you, Albert. Um, well, I mean, clearly, I don't know if anybody's underestimating it. It was, you know, they were screaming I mean, it from the rooftops for, for days. Kathy. Kathy hauls her rear end out to the sleet and the snow, and we don't take Kathy? There she is, shivering up a storm. Yeah, well, I just think, I think we, out there. we just needed an overview. Yeah. Um, I don't need the reporter stand up going, that's right, David, <laughs> out here. It's, you can, as you can see behind me, that's the big, as you can see behind me, <laughs> as you can see, as you can see. As uh, you can see, I want to die. It's so yeah. cold. We've been out here since 3 a.m., David. Yeah. We're not chauffeured in a limo <laughs> to some 30 rock warm studio. I'm out here freezing my ass off. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, these snow drifts have increased. So it's pretty nasty out there. Many flights canceled. When is it going to improve, Albert? Is there any word on the, uh, uh, you know, are you looking at the horizon? I'd have to recap, but I think they should be done inspecting all the 37 maxes. So yeah. hopefully soon. And but what about the, the weather? The weather. What about the know. weather? Albert, thank you. With the, uh, the, yeah. We're, we're getting a mix of everything, though. We got the tornadoes down south. We got yeah. everybody else. We got frozen. the snow on the East Coast. Yeah. But hopefully, it, well, it's been a not so bad winter. So we when does Jesus come back? Is he coming back? Is, are these the signs that Jesus uh, is coming? I, I think I, we just. We're, we're, we're still hungover from December. I think uh, around end of March, I think he'll be coming. Back. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's solid. That's a solid plan. You know, you miss the... Um... Anyway, that's the deal on a little bit of what's happening nationwide. The Mark Thompson Show. They've reconfigured my studio. Not that you need to worry about it. I hate it. I hate everything right now, uh, of course. But um, uh, my hair is just like... Looks like no, they do this flying. to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for. That's not what I hate. What I hate is that I can't see the chat. I used to be able to see the chat right here. Now I have to look all the way over here, so I really just can't even see it. Um, uh, Jesus came, Ricky O'Bear said. Oh, wow, he came. I didn't even oh. know. That's what I think would happen. I mean, if Jesus comes back, I don't know that he'd be noticed. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I don't know how he... But he would make a pretty big entrance, is my guessing. Is my guess. He's not gonna. You're not gonna miss him. Yeah. I don't know I mean, if it burned down, but there's a sign, or there used to be a sign in Lahaina, Maui, and it it was a neon sign, and it said Jesus is coming soon, and it was mm. uh, I guess attached to a little church 
kind of a landmark in that area. I don't know if the Jesus oh, coming true. soon sign is gone or if it's yeah. if he's still planning on making an appearance. I don't know. Those are I mean, always if it's gone. Is he going to come back? Kim? Yeah. That's more important. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Right, exactly. Coming yes. soon to a theater near you. Full visiting privileges, does Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is staying away right now. Somebody says maybe Christ will come back in time for March Madness, says John Slade. Well, there he's got to go. get his picks in. You know, that 5-12 to 12 matchup, I'm sure, is really but it's not. Him. He should be not allowed to play. That's ridiculous. Yeah. He knows he's going to win. And by the way, you can say, well, he's got more important things to do than play March Madness. He, dude, he's God. He can do a lot of stuff at once. Just in, this, just in. He's running the whole effing universe. He can certainly lay out the perfect. Don't think I don't know that he can lay out the perfect brackets. He is. He is not allowed to play, Albert. Should he come back? The Mark Thompson Show. Now, uh, I also wanted to share with you something else before I get to Rothman, who. Uh, be ahead in just a couple of minutes and I will talk about that third party challenge and how that might affect Joe Biden's chances of winning a second term. Uh, I wanted to share with you something that I saw on CNN and I liked it for the twist it has. It was an interview and is an interview. It's not old at all. It's a, I think it just ran last night. Uh, with a J6 uh, violent protester who is going to prison. But the reason I like it, and here's the twist, I'll kind of give it to you ahead of time. When you meet her, you think, oh my gosh, she got caught up in the fervor. She got caught up in that flow, the momentum, emotional momentum and physical momentum of the moment. And she now regrets it. And isn't that the real story? But stay with it. And you realize, nope. She has a death grip on the lie that was told and continues to be told. Albert, run a little bit. This is a grandmother convicted for her January 6th capital attack. She, I think she has eight children and many grandchildren. Here we go. How do you feel when you watch this? You know, I think I, I'm more numb when I look at this stuff. It's like surreal to me. I mean, look how angry I look. You'd admit she's in that stuff. pink hat. Totally. Yeah. You know how dumb I feel when I look at this picture? Like, oh my goodness. Rachel Powell, also known as the pink hat lady, is about to begin a five year prison sentence for her role in the January 6 attack on the US Capitol. She's a mom of eight and grandmother of six, and she spent most of the last three years under home detention in rural Pennsylvania. Is this what you expected from an insurrectionist, a terrorist? How do I have time to plan an insurrection when my life is busy like this? Yeah, Maybe I mean, you can stop right there. First of all, we can't make it any louder. Any, but, but, oh, look uh, at me. I'm just making pies at home. Yeah, I, I mean, didn't how, try to how, violently break into the nation's capital right. with an ice pick. Do I look Come like on. a terrorist? I'm a grandmother. I'm making pies. I mean, I don't have time to plan an insurrection. Uh, well, you did have time to show up to an insurrection. You had, and you'll learn, uh, this uh, pick that you're picking through the window with. And uh, you were taking on cops. I mean, that's why you're going to prison. So uh, this idea, so do, do I look like a police? Do I look like a terrorist? Right. You do. It, you look like a terrorist. Not only that, you're a dumbass who should have nothing to do with raising children. Are you kidding mm. me? Wow. God, go to prison five years. Yes. Take the kids away from you for five years. You're awful. You're an awful wow. human being. Jeez, Kim, we're laying in hard with the, the grandmother. Good day, sir. Listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> Call me a patriot, but I take democracy really seriously, and I take the preservation of democracy really seriously. So I am a sucker. Yeah, Stupid well. people come through like this who don't realize what they're doing because she's clueless. You see in the later in the video, she's cuckoo for cocoa puffs. She yeah. is a she yeah. is a, a cuckoo adjacent. Definitely. Yeah. Let's uh, continue with the um, maybe pump that audio. Thank you as best we can. Why did you decide to go to D.C. on January sixth? Well, how often does a president ask you to come to a rally? Doesn't happen. At some point, this goes from peaceful protest to you having an ice axe in your hand, mm -hmm. um, breaking a window, trying to get into the Capitol. How did that happen? It got violent, and it was violent for a while. And I'm completely in pain. 
and um because you had been hit oh man i had been hit with a baton i'd been grabbed and thrown i'd been sprayed i mean my whole body was on fire i don't think there was rational thinking in my head at that point i didn't have an ice axe that passed through the crowd somebody put it in my hands and it was only in my hands long enough to take out that window pane and yet i've been charged with a deadly weapon somebody really, give you well we're lucky it wasn't a gun i guess mm -hmm. i don't know you don't remember i don't know who they were um i don't know where it came from i don't know where it went i grew up and i guess you probably did too of, of being told you know if a police officer tells you to do something you should probably do it mm -hmm. that didn't happen that day of course the police were telling you guys to go away they never actually told us to go away. I never had an officer look at me and say, you need to leave or I'm going to arrest you. Footage like this. By the way, that's Rachel. the beginning that's of the twist. You, you see, oh, wait a minute. No, but no one ever yeah. actually looked me in the eye and said, we have to, really? Really? That whole um, getting smacked with a baton thing, that was just a welcome party? What? Mm. No? They just they just handed me that. I don't know, even know who handed it to me. I just only had it for 90 seconds, just long enough to break the window. And yeah. I mean, it, it, th these are utterly absurd and gross excuses or explanations, but it gets worse. Go ahead, Albert. In the fur hooded coat, pushing against the police line, and messages she posted on social media condoning violence ahead of January 6th were used by prosecutors to argue that Rachel wasn't just a peaceful protester who got caught up in the chaos of the day. Do you regret that day? Um, I regret, I have a lot of remorse for ruining my family's life. I mean, in one day, I destroyed everything for really for nothing. I don't have remorse for attending protests. I don't have remorse for speaking out and saying that I believe that the election is stolen. I do have remorse for breaking a window and destroying my whole family's life and for thinking irrationally and not realizing, like, why don't you just sit down at this protest? A federal judge convicted Rachel on nine counts, including destruction of government property, obstruction of an official proceeding, and engaging in physical violence in a restricted building or grounds. I'm sorry, it's like my last weekend before I go in. But, um, like, I love my children so much, and so it's like the last thing that they can take from me that'll be the hard part. And I don't deserve this. And my kids don't deserve it. Like, have we not been through enough? Like, that's the last thing that we have to lose is each other. Yeah, actually, you haven't been through enough, because you have a, as I suggested before, a ridiculous delusional grip on an absurd story. And you're still slinging it. Good riddance. You know where I am on this. I'd be much tougher with all of these people than the feds have been. I think that we have been slow to prosecute, certainly slow to prosecute with Trump, who was the head of the snake. And we have been slow to prosecute, and I think soft on a lot of these people who are part of this. This is a brutal day in American history, and it almost worked. It was an outright coup attempt, and this woman was part of it. And she can recharacterize it and reclassify it and then continue to sling those lies associated with the election. But oh, it, to call it reprehensible that. is to, Don't know what is I'll to do understate it. Someone just put it in my hand. Guess I'll beat in the windows of this Capitol building. Thank you. With that. Thank you. As I say, glad She's it wasn't a gun. Uh, smash the like button uh, smash it if you're not your going. If you're rod. not going to prison, smash that like button. Damn smash it! Smash it with your iron rod. Smash it like a boss. John Rothman coming. He'll have thoughts on this and the third party candidates perhaps affecting the election. Kim's News First, Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. This report is sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore. 
It was a surprise appearance by Hunter Biden that caused some chaos on Capitol Hill at his contempt of Congress hearing. After sitting for a few moments, the president's son stormed out of the hearing just as GOP Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia was about to speak. House Republicans have threatened to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress for defying a subpoena to appear for a closed door deposition. He says he'll appear for an open door, not a closed door. Uh, there's some great video of that too. So I think we have we have it. We'll play it for you uh, in before a, in the a end bit. of the show. That'd be good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. A ju- yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Or not. A, yeah. The judge in former President Trump's New York civil fraud trial will not be allowing him to deliver closing arguments tomorrow. Trump's lawyers were told by the judge Trump did not respond to requests to agree to precondition. Trump, of course, charged with defrauding banks by inflating his net worth on Trump Tower, on Mar-a-Lago and other properties as well by billions of dollars to get better interest rates on loans. I'm sorry, let me understand the story. They're not going to let Trump He Say wanted to he wanted to give his clo- the closing arguments in that Trump fraud himself case. wanted to yeah. give the closing arguments. I but think. he didn't meet preconditions. He didn't respond yeah. to the the documentation needed and so the judge said no no can do. Wow. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Governor Gavin Newsom unveiling his first draft of a budget spending plan here in California. The $291 billion state budget aims to close a $38 billion gap. That's an adjusted deficit from the $68 billion shortfall projected by the Legislative Analyst Office last month. Governor saying his spending plan keeps promises to fund critical issues like homelessness, education, crime, and mental health reform. There will be only two. And then there were two uh, on, the, <laughs> on the stage for tonight's Republican presidential primary debate. Wow. Alongside former President Trump, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley were the only candidates to qualify for the debate in Des Moines, Iowa. Now, Trump, as has want to do before, has chosen to skip this event opting instead to take part of uh, in a new Fox News town hall. The latest polling showing him in first place, Haley a close second, followed by DeSantis and a distant third. Yeah, and he's now turning the turret of hate toward (laughs) Nikki Haley. And uh, Nikki Haley's got the business end of uh, some Trump insults. I'll talk to John Rothman about that. The turret of hate. Yes, the turret of hate. Speaking of the turret of hate, I guess you can't get away from it. Anti-Semitism skyrocketing in the United States since the October 7th Hamas attacks on Israel. That according to the Anti-Defamation League, which tracked more than 3,200 anti-Semitic incidents since that attack up through January 7th. More than 1,300 incidents are described as rallies that involved anti-Semitic or what they call anti-Zionist rhetoric. Speaking of weather, you talked about the snow falling uh in other parts of the United States, but here in the Sierra, well, not where I'm not in the Sierra, but here in California, we'll say light rain and gusty winds are challenging drivers across Northern California tonight and tomorrow. Drivers in the Sierra could face whiteout conditions. Meteorologists say snowfall rates midday Wednesday could be one to three inches per hour. 10 to 14 inches of snow are possible in cities like Truckee and South Lake Tahoe. The storm moves out Wednesday evening and temperatures in some Central Valley locations will drop below freezing. So there you have it. Governor Gavin Newsom calling on the legislature to create new laws expanding criminal penalties to crack down on professional thieves. One of my favorite things about the Mark Thompson show is the tough on crime stance. Yes. Here it comes. I'm very tough. You are very tough. Proposals include increasing felony penalties for those engaged in retail theft and reselling of stolen property. It updates existing law so police can arrest suspects even if they didn't witness a crime in progress. And it would clarify the penal code to allow law enforcement to combine the value of multiple thefts, even across different victims, to reach the threshold for grand theft. The governor says new laws would give police and prosecutors tools to arrest and hold professional criminals accountable. Throw the yes. book at them. Get them all. I'm, I, I mean, I do feel very strongly about it. I, I feel the only way to restore order to our cities and the only way to... And this, is, by the way, is a problem... 
well, I don't mean to get into this now, but it's a it's one of the problems and one of the doors that opens for fascism, sadly, and authoritarianism, is that people's desire for order begins to bypass their desire for freedom. And you can run into problems with this desire to kind of lock everybody up. And, you know, I am a sort of lock everybody up. I <laughs> lean that way because I'm so sick of, you know, everything being under lock and key because people just walk into Walgreens and just w wipe out the makeup department. You know, I'm just sick of this. Um, but the problem with that is that it does open the door to authoritarianism on a level that can be disturbing. I mean, on any level, authoritarianism is disturbing, but I'm saying uh, it happens more quickly and more easily than one might think. But anyway, I am for tough law and order. I, I, it, it's gotten way out of control, way, way, way out of control. Well, not anymore. We're going to get them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, little, a little business news. Intel showing off its new AI-powered chip at yeah. CES. Yep, the chip is designed to run personalized AI features in your automobile. No word on when vehicle manufacturers will adopt Intel's technology. Do you want AI telling you how to run your car? I don't know. Twitch is reportedly laying off another 500 employees. Ugh. According to, I hate to see anybody lose their job. According to Bloomberg, the Amazon owned company will announce the 35% staff reduction as soon as this week. Last year, the live streaming platform eliminated nearly 600 positions in two rounds of cuts. So, again, what? another 500 workers going away at Twitch. There's some um, big doings in Napa with the Napa welcome sign. Have you heard about this? No. no. Oh, uh, please, go ahead, and I'll tell you what I've heard of it. Yeah. So Napa Valley is looking for a new home for its iconic welcome sign. Officials mm. would like to move it to a safer location due to the 5 million visitors who take photos in front of it every year. Apparently, it's a selfie stop. The sign is up along Highway 29 between Yauntville and Oakville, but many park on the other side of the freeway. It is a freeway. And then cross the busy road. Some even cross the railroad tracks to get into the vineyard to try to take pictures with the Napa Valley welcome sign. Now, I can I'd see I'd be willing why to you bet my lunch that there's alcohol involved. Yeah. Why you would want to, because it's kind of a cool sign, but it's a major thoroughfare, and that is some dangerous business trying to cross roads and do this. So maybe not so much. Here's a picture of the sign. Yeah. I don't know wow. if, if it's worth, you know. So now they're thinking of relocating this sign, which is kind of a bummer because, you know, you want a welcome sign as the city limits come into view. But tourists, dumb tourists, what are you going to do? Wow. Well, yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah. I love um, those pictures with signs as a tourist myself. Do so. you? You're a sign yeah. guy? I'm a big sign guy, sign picture guy. Yeah. Speaking of Napa, a Napa You know, Valley you got John Rothman waiting. You can't pad your oh. park too much more. A Napa Valley winery is jumping onto the AI bandwagon in a big way with a robot sommelier. I love it. This, I love it. There's never what? been anything like there this. There really has it. That sounds great. He's worth 50 grand. They call him Robo Vino. He's wow. been working Nobody at the... has ever put something like this <laughs> together that I've ever seen. Oh, wow. That's pretty He's terrific. He's been working at the Maria Concetto Winery since November. The owner yeah, has. Says, There's yeah. been a 30% increase in foot traffic since Robo wow. Vino. I have never heard of something like that. But, wow. So she's thinking of buying the AI upgrade. Because she straight. wants to be able to speak. Robo Vino can help out with foot food pairings and events. Detractors say there's no way a robot can replicate a human's expertise. They say it's just a passing fad. Oh. A flight of four varietals with Robo Vino costs 75 bucks. In the <laughs> I'm loving the Robo Vino. There is Robo nothing in, in our history, history that, that quite compares, compares to, this. to this. Yes. Speaking of wine, forget Napa, head to Livermore. Because this report is sponsored by Tenuta Vineyard. Simply say, Come on, Tenuta. Smash it with your iron rod and yeah. you get the 10% off. Smash and here's it a with your iron Tenuta. rod. Look at yeah. that flight of wine. I am telling yes. you what. You call Sit Rich out, out, at, out at the winery at Tenuta the at 9 soaked afternoon. 
699-4576. You say smash it with your iron rod. You get your 10% off. And then you get your bottle of why are you yelling red? Yes. And enjoy it by the fireplace in this Oof. cold, cold, cold winter we're having. Sounding I'm Kim good. Callister. Why are you yelling? Yes. I gotta go because John Rothman's coming up. It is yes. the Mark Thompson show. They had to close down an entire radio station to silence him. And now he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Thompson. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. Please be seated. Please. I'm I I'm I'm humbled by your recorded affections. Now please, please stop. Yes. Please, 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 folks. I've got a show to do. Come on, everybody. Please stop. Look, I will, I will clear this courtroom if I don't get the support. Thank you. I have a distinguished visitor and regular guest waiting. He is, I was thinking about this this morning. John Rothman is like the smart older brother that I never had. And uh, he's a student of political history, of presidential history. He is an author, a talk show host, a lecturer. He is the great John Rothman, everybody. Thank you. And hear that applause? It's coming from me too, Mark. I love it, John. I love it. It means more from you than anyone else. I have mad respect for you. I want to ask you about, uh, of course, this um, debate's going down tonight, uh, and I'll double back to that in a second, because even though it likely won't affect Iowa results, or maybe, you know, this is a national stage on some level, and maybe it'll affect something else, we'll double back to it. I, I kind of billboarded the fact that I would ask you about these third party candidates because I see them as relevant when you have two incredibly unpopular main candidates, but particularly Joe Biden. I see Trump's floor as solid, okay? Um, it's that, you know, solid floor, low ceiling, right? I mean, he has a very solid following, but he doesn't have a lot of room to really gain more followers because of the kind of candidate that he is. Biden, opposite right uh not so much solid floor and i'm not sure whether he's got ceiling you added that third party candidates they siphon off votes how do you see these third party candidacies affecting these two main candidates they matter only if they're on the ballot a third party candidate who is not on the ballot has no particular relevance so the question will be and we'll analyze this as days go on state by state where third party candidates are on the ballot if it's Robert Kennedy Jr., I think it hurts Trump more than it hurts Biden. But on the other hand, we have to watch and wait and see. Let me just emphasize this one more time. You have to be on the ballot to have an impact. Speak to that then, John. What is involved in getting these candidacies, the Cornell West, uh, I think third, uh, No Labels is just uh, announced, um, Larry Hogan, What's involved in getting these guys on ballots nationwide? Every state is different. We, remember, this is not a national election. It's a state-by-state -state election. So what we would have to do, Mark, is methodically go through each state and what qualifies to get on the ballot. And where does it matter? Remember, there are states where it won't matter if there's a third-party candidate because either the Democrats or the Republicans are so far ahead. California is a great example. Peace and Freedom Party is on the ballot. I don't know who their candidate will be. But these are all questions that have to be resolved on a state-by-state -state basis. At this moment, my sense is that the third parties have to figure out state-by-state -state where they're going to go. Cornell West, by the way, uh, made a huge error, I think, because if he'd run as the Green Party candidate for president, he would have been on the ballot in states automatically as the Green Party candidate for president. But he couldn't get the Green Party nomination, so he decided to go independent. Well, how does he get on the ballot? Uh, does he have the army of people to do it? Remember, the last third party candidate for president to be on the ballot in all 50 states was George C. Wallace in 1968. And he worked for two years to make sure he'd be on the ballot in all 50 states. Uh the uh, Let's just, uh, I hate to get into too much of the X's and O's, but it is intriguing, and this is kind of your bailiwick if i could use that name, that uh, expression uh what's involved john in 
getting on these t- uh, these ballots. In other words, when you say, well, if he'd gone with the Green Party, he would automatically be on these uh, various ballots in various states. Why that party and why not no labels, for example, just to pick, you know. A, a in California, party. you have two parties that are automatically on the ballot, the American Independent Party, which was the remnant of George Wallace's party, uh, and the Green Party. Uh, we used to have, by the way, for years, the Prohibition Party, Harold E. Munn, who nobody remembers but me. Uh, so all I can tell you is, it, again, it's a state by state thing. Yeah, but John, he, what I'm asking is, why aren't these other parties automatically included uh, with uh, on ballots? Because they haven't qualified in the past. Oh, I see. Okay. You have to be qualified. You have to be uh, have voters. Uh, you have to have demonstrated that or signatures. You can get on the ballot in many states by signatures, but you have to have enough signatures to do it. In other words, a third party candidacy has an effect on the election only if you are on the ballot and have some traction. I mean, you've got a record number of voters abandoning the two parties, as you know. You've got people down on the institutions associated with elections with this two-party system that has really been, it's a de facto two-party setup in America. And you even saw Republicans and Democrats collude on some level to squeeze out the no-labels candidates. I mean, there's a real... uh, interest that both parties have in maintaining the status quo that you, way. You I'm just proved about my that. point, Mark. Yeah. It is getting on the ballot. The fact that I announced today on the Mark Thompson show that I'm a candidate for president of the United States makes no difference if my name isn't on the ballot. Yeah. Uh, write-in candidates don't have an impact. It's being on the ballot. So again, I know I don't want to belabor the point, but everyone is now considering how do you get on the ballot and how will it impact? That's what yeah. they're asking. I mean, I think Americans polled would say this is a stale system. It doesn't work anymore. And you have to have a third party that qualifies on the ballot. And in order to do that, each state has its own requirements. So it, look, how did the Republican Party emerge as a third party to get on the ballot? It went state by state in 1854, 1856, 1858, and finally in 1860 with Abraham Lincoln as their candidate for president. They didn't win a majority of the vote, but they were on the ballot in enough states to have the electoral votes needed to win. So let's assume for a minute that I got on the ballot in California and California said, oh, we're all going to vote for John Rothman. Wouldn't mean a damn thing. I mean, it would take the votes away from the Democrats, but you have to still have the necessary electoral votes to be elected president. Well, you know, you kind of joke a little bit about that or that that extreme example, but that's exactly what I'm talking about, taking votes away. And in this very slim electoral college majority, okay, yeah, but if you can can get on the ballot, you know, then that third party candidacy becomes super relevant. Wouldn't you? It can be super relevant. Uh, Ralph Nader is the best example in Florida or Pat Buchanan. Uh, They ran as third party candidates in the year 2000. They took enough votes between them that George W. Bush, if you believe the numbers, carried the state by about 600 votes. I mean, if you're a third party candidate, remember that in the butterfly ballot in uh, in uh, Palm Beach County, that uh, a lot of people voted not really, they didn't think they were voting for Buchanan, they thought they were voting for Gore and they, the ballot wasn't done properly. Uh, it was really an unfair situation. But again, I, I repeat, and I, I don't mean to be repetitive, <laughs> but you've got to get on the ballot. You've got to have a presence and you've got to have a candidate. Sure. Uh, you've got to have a candidate who has some appeal. People don't vote for a party. They vote for an individual. Donald Trump has turned his ire toward Nikki Haley. Gee, I which, wonder why. Like, yeah. Clearly, yeah. I think if I'm in the Nikki Haley camp, I'm feeling good about that. It means that Trump and his people see the numbers, particularly out of New Hampshire, that suggests that Nikki Haley is closing that lead. I think she's within 10 points of Trump in New Hampshire, yes. uh, even as she and, and DeSantis trailed. And again, I will get to the debate thing in a second. But I wonder if you can just give me uh, some thoughts on that. He's even, I think, begun that whole birther thing with Nikki Haley. You know, like that she's yeah, not... Yeah, she has. Well, let's assume for a minute that uh, Donald Trump wins in Iowa by a landslide. He seems to have the best ground game. Uh, the person who thought he had the best ground game was Ron DeSantis, It appears he doesn't. So it appears Trump will be number one, Nikki Haley number two. How heavily does Donald Trump bury Nikki Haley? Then we go to New Hampshire. But remember, the New Hampshire primary is not a conventional primary. Independents can vote either for a Democrat or a Republican. 
So it's not a pure Republican contest. But let's assume for a minute that Nikki Haley comes within five points of Trump. What's going to happen when they get to South Carolina? Uh, I'm going to tell you something. If Nikki Haley can't win her own state, no matter how well she does, she can't be the nominee of the party. And then you're going to go into Florida. And let me remind you that the question, and we, I think we talked about this last week, I think it was with you, the question of a woman's right to choose being on the ballot. Sure. It's going to be on the ballot in Florida. And let me assure you, uh, that is not going to help Ron DeSantis in his campaign against Donald Trump. So essentially, my conclusion is that Donald Trump can only be stopped if, in fact, Nikki Haley can triumph in Iowa, triumph in New Hampshire, triumph in South Carolina. And by the way, if she loses South Carolina, her own state primary, she's finished. No candidate for president can be nominated who can't carry their own state. Sure, sure. And I made the point, as you were talking about the abortion issue being on the ballot, I made the point that it needs to be, and this should be the work of Democrats, it needs to be, and those who value women's reproductive rights, on the ballot in all 50 states, anywhere you want to boost turnout and you want to boost Democratic turnout, you've got to get some resolution on the ballot about hey, let me, let me a woman's disagree right to you. choose. You Respectfully, must. Respectfully, let me disagree. Yes, please, go ahead and disagree. The issue is so overwhelming that if there's nothing on the ballot but a candidate for president of the United States opposes a woman's right to choose, which is the case of Donald Trump, Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, Chris Christie, Women are going to flock away from them because they now understand we've learned a lesson when Donald Trump said, I'm going to put people on the Supreme Court who will rescind Roe v. Wade, will overturn a precedent setting case. That's exactly what he did. Women are not going to be fooled again. And men who support a woman's control of their own body aren't going to be fooled. And by the way, Mark, if somebody tried to tell you or me what we could do with our body, what would we tell them to do? No, I mean, you don't, that's need, what, to, that's you what don't need to litigate the cases. And you don't need to litigate it here. Um, rescind is a ding word. But I would say that uh, this can be a fat and happy view that Democrats have, which is just what you've articulated. Let me tell you, it's overwhelming. People understand it. You don't need to get, yeah. People understand it. I agree with, of course, I think what you just said is on some level indisputable. But on another level, I think you need to keep it in people's faces. They're going because, to. You're right. going to see it on everybody's voices Every debate, every advertisement, the Democrats are going to drive this right into the country's consciousness. And the country is aware. You can see it. The, the uh, seven states that have already voted uh, on this issue have absolutely rejected the idea of eliminating women's right to choose. N Nikki Haley and, and Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump, in my judgment, have already laid the foundation. But you're right. The more states it's on, the better. But if it's not on state ballots, it'll be on everybody's mind. And particularly, let me point out, if the Supreme Court sides with Donald Trump on some of these key issues, including immunity, the Supreme Court will be a major issue. And people will well, if the Supreme, the Supreme Court, Court sides with with Donald Trump on immunity, that would be an extraordinary watershed moment in this country's voters. history. But understand, it's going to mobilize voters either way. If Donald Trump is not granted immunity, the Trump voters are going to be more motivated than ever. But that's the point. This is going to be a, an election based on, re, on action and reaction. And they were motivated last time, John. As you know, the, the turnout was extraordinary in the general election, uh, but the last uh, showdown between Biden and Trump. Uh, and you're and it right. it will be again. It, it, it will likely be again. And I, you think you're also right to point to the Supreme Court case and all of these different cases against Trump, which animate his base. And, and animate his opposition. That's what's important. All right. Well, let's sides. see. So I, I tend to have a bleak outlook, so you may be right. Let who, me ask has, you about... Who yeah. is motivating people more in a negative way? I believe people vote as much against as they vote for. People oh, are going to vote No question against about it. I think Trump the last election Trump. was an evidence of them. Two elections ago was an evidence of that. They voted people against... people vote against Trump. Uh... Look, the the midterms will certainly bear that out as well. Just to be fair to uh, Brother Rothman, he you know that the recent evidence is all backing uh, what what Brother Rothman is saying. Now, let me ask you about the debate. Uh, there is it's not I mean, a debate; it's a, it's a joint appearance. Right. Okay. This is between Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. DeSantis, who's taking on water so quickly. Uh, he's pretty well done, I would suggest. Most of the institutional money on the Republican side is moving toward Haley. Uh, Donald Trump is doing this 
you know, uh, appearance with the Fox News folk at the same time. And I'll just mention in terms of funding, Donald Trump is funding his campaign with small donors a lot of the way, you know, a few biggies and then, you know, all of these MAGA followers who are sending him, you know, $30 a month and getting some medallion or whatever. Listen, you know, people can support the Mark Thompson program and get a, a mug if, if you just That's uh, right. do it right. Thank you very much, John, for putting it in perspective. Yeah. Um, but in the general uh, distinguished history of the show, we give uh, people nothing for their support except for uh, content. Uh, where is, you get, uh, except content. Brilliant exactly. content. Um, John, what is, where is, uh, you get nothing. I used to have that here, but I don't even have it anymore. Um, so you're saying that this appearance tonight means nothing? No, it means that the real person I'm going to be looking at is Nikki Haley. How much will DeSantis attack her? How will Nikki Haley respond? will blunt questions like, was it an insurrection on January 6th? Should a president have immunity? These will be the kinds of questions that are going to matter. And for Nikki Haley to score tonight, uh, she has to really produce. One mistake by Nikki Haley, and I think she's in trouble. Now, she made a big mistake on slavery. Let's see if she, and she'll have to answer that question, I'm sure, again. Uh, but those well, she made a mistake and she didn't for. make a mistake, right, Brother Rothman? The fact is, she's playing to her constituency. They're not as bothered by her response as you might be in Libville, right? You know well, it's slavery. I'm talking, about the general, I'm talking about the general election. Okay, so you're talking and about her appeal to those who are not in the GOP camp. Okay. Exactly. Okay, sorry, go ahead. And I would say in New Hampshire, which is a live free or die state, which was absolutely committed to the Union cause in the Civil War, uh, it's going to make a difference there. Now, the real issue here is Donald Trump. Uh, how much baggage does he carry? And I think he carries a great deal. And Republicans want to win the election. So the question is, can they win with Donald Trump? And uh, they might think that they would do better with somebody else. But, you know, the great disappointment is Ron DeSantis. Imagine, Ron DeSantis raised millions and millions of dollars. The last time somebody did this, I've never forgotten it, John Connolly ran in 1980. He raised $11 million. And you know how many delegates he got to the Republican National Convention in 1980? One. One. That was the most expensive delegate in the history of American <laughs> politics. And he went uh, nowhere. It, yeah. It's being asked uh, who is moderating the debate. It's on CNN and Dana it's being Bash moderated by Tapper. Jake Tapper and Dana Bash. Exactly. And um, the debate takes place, of course, in Iowa at 9 o'clock Eastern tonight at uh, Drake University in Des Moines. 6 o'clock our time. Yeah, 6 o'clock our time. Uh, John Rothman will be watching it, of course. But uh, he says it's important only as we kind of watch DeSantis uh, flounder and Nikki Haley has to have a good night is what uh, John Rothman is they're, saying. They're arguing for the second spot is what right. they're arguing. Uh, for. Uh, is this a is this a oh, vice presidency? Is this a vice presidency play? No, or these I was two... going to just say on the vice presidency. Okay. Yeah. Where is Donald Trump registered to vote? Florida. Where is Ron DeSantis from? Florida. You cannot have two people from the same state on the presidential and vice presidential ballot. It's forbidden. So the interesting thing, if you remember, when did I know Dick Cheney would be the nominee? When he shifted his voter registration from Texas to Wyoming because Bush was from Texas. So for DeSantis, I don't think the vice presidency is in the cards. He's governor of Florida. He's not going to leave Florida to be vice president of the United States. So I don't think that's an issue. For Nikki Haley, the most interesting thing for me are the number of avid Trump supporters, avid Trump supporters who absolutely say they will not vote for Nikki Haley, period. These are some of Trump's biggest people. If I were looking at a running mate for Donald Trump, uh, I think Elise Stefanik, if he wants a woman, who has now endorsed him, the entire uh, House Republican leadership have endorsed Trump for president, all of them, she would make a good, solid candidate. Uh, and uh, I think that's who he's looking at. Or Senator Scott, Tim Scott of uh, South Carolina, who is African-American and has made no criticism of Trump, nor has Trump made any criticism of him. 
But then again, he could pull a fast one and choose somebody we haven't even thought of. You know, he suggested Tucker Carlson uh, as the vice presidential. Nominee. He doesn't want anybody who's an alpha male on the ticket no. with him. I think he want. I think that's a really great take. So the Elise Stefanik thing seems very obvious, and she's got to be the front runner. She's uh, and and Tim Scott maybe, but I think that. You know, Trump wants somebody in that supplicative, surrender themselves kind of world that won't ever give him a peep of trouble. Elise Stefanik is maybe that person. If I, I were going to make an ad against Trump, I would have all the people who served in his administration who now say they would never vote for him do little short clips. And I'd run that nationally for everybody to hear, because let me tell you, most of the people who served with him will not support him again. I want to ask you about something way off the beaten track, far from the American presidency. It's what's just happened in Ecuador. I was just in Ecuador, as you know, about two and a half weeks ago. So was my son Samuel about a month ago. My bags are still there, actually, what? John. Uh, yes, both of my bags are either in Ecuador or Guatemala or somewhere. Uh, but more on that another time. Something has happened huge in Ecuador, as you know. There has been a coup there, right? Um, during the mid-afternoon newscast in Ecuador. On TV. Their, on TV, masked gunmen burst in, unleashing at least 15 minutes of threats, all broadcast live. First, a man with a pistol appeared in the middle of the public TV station's live transmission, then a second man with a shotgun, a third, and more. The... Station employees were brought onto the set, ordered to lie down. Screams could be heard, followed by the sound of gunshots. We are on the air, this is a quote, so you know that you cannot play with the mafia, one of the assailants is heard saying. They were aiming guns at news staff. This is an assault on the TV station in the port city there in Ecuador. And this came just hours after a series of other attacks and police officer abductions. This is... Uh, also following apparent escapes from prison of the two leaders of the country's most powerful gangs. Um, what to say about Ecuador and the Central American nations that fall victim to this kind of coup, this kind of uh, joint effort to overthrow a government? Uh, sadly, it feels as though we're not a long way away from some of that because of the instability demonstrated uh, just three years ago on January 6th. Can you speak to this? Sure. First of all, let's talk about the American coup. That is what happened in the United States. CNN did a special with Jake Tapper that is one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen on television describing the American coup. But let me explain instability in Central and South America. The potential in Central and South America for instability continues to grow. And that is why we are having increasing numbers of people trying to get into the United States. Understand that the Republicans sent a delegation of members of Congress down to the border. Didn't mean anything. They said what they normally say. But now the Republicans are determined to hold up aid to Ukraine and to Israel because our borders are not secure. The minute our borders are not secure, more and more people have to flee. And where do they flee? North north to us, U.S., and that, I think, is the real key here. There's nothing we can really do in light of what's happening in Ecuador. It is an internal matter, and this is not like Richard Nixon, who had Allende overthrown, uh, and we got stuck with Pinochet. This is a different situation. This is really coming from the grassroots in Ecuador. So uh, when all is settled down, you may get your bags back, but you know what I always say? Everybody has their own bag. <laughs> I didn't know you always said that. That's great. No, I'm I, saying for you. Oh, okay. I uh, will finish out with something from San Francisco. San Francisco never disappoints. The Board of Supervisors, of course, as you know, with the city all cleaned up now, the homeless problem in San Francisco totally taken care of. Thank God they've got those streets clean now. And... Uh, no fentanyl crisis anymore. Apparently, there have been no deaths from fentanyl any longer. People are not shooting up on streets, publicly urinating and defecating on the streets of San Francisco anymore. Apparently, there are no more smash and grabs 
It must be great to be in San Francisco now. So finally, as a supervisor, they can turn their attention to the things that really matter, like voting yesterday on a resolution calling for a ceasefire to the hostilities in the Gaza Strip, everybody. That is what we expect from that San Francisco Board of Supervisors. I wonder if you could speak to that, please, sir. Mark, your sound just so I can't hear you, but I will respond and tell you you are exactly right that what happened in San Francisco is a disgrace. Uh, and the three members of the Board of Supervisors who voted against this resolution did so because they were very clear that Hamas was not condemned. The beheadings, the rape, the atrocities were not condemned. It is clear that this is a serious question uh, and uh, that uh, the San Francisco Board of Supervisors was unwilling to take it up. So all I can tell you is, thank God, San Francisco does not make the foreign policy of the United States of America. And let me just point out to you that Berkeley, berserkly as we affectionately call it, refused to take up the resolution. And uh, so Berkeley outclassed San Francisco on this one. And I'm glad to hear, Mark, that everything else in the city is going so well. <laughs> John can be found on Around the Political World with John Rothman. It's a daily podcast, Monday through Friday. It's all done in, what is it, 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 and minutes. I want to point out, we've had over 100,000 downloads. The numbers are growing. And I owe a great debt of thanks to Mark Thompson and Kim McAllister and Albert, the show, because we put up uh, what we do on the Mark Thompson program. Mark promotes around the political world with John Rothman. And we're very grateful for that, Mark. I was remarking the other day to someone, without the vehicle of commercial radio, there is no talk radio in San Francisco, none, the fourth largest media market in America, that what you have done and what I am trying to do and what Nikki is trying to do and Kim is trying to provide an alternative and the more people that our listeners tune in and tell people to tune in, the better off we are. And let me tell you, uh, you all know that Mark's program is a crowd-funded program, as is Mickey's, uh, Nikki's program. So it is very important that you support them. Uh, and uh, I'm delighted to be a part of this program. And uh, I'm happy, Mark, particularly, to donate my salary, your exorbitantly <laughs> generous salary, to the maintenance of the Mark Thompson Program. Wow, very so well. That's quite a yes. It was a stirring. That was a stirring, stirring um, summary of where we are and where we need to go, and the uh, urge for support. I loved it, John. There's nobody like you. As I, I always say, I don't agree with everything he says, but I sure agree with the way he says it. You know, I mean, I love the John Rothman. You are the best. All right, my friend. Just wait till next week, Mark. We're going to have a lot to talk about. Who knows what the Supreme Court way may do? What will happen in Iowa? I mean, my gosh, I can't wait. Serious stuff. Serious stuff. Good right. times, my friend. Great to talk to you. John you. Rothman. Yeah. The Mark Thompson Show. I know, I know. I've received a lot of positive letters. I do. Oh, yeah. You know what, Albert? I did get a, a really cool um, email from the guy Trevor Starr in Hollywood. You know, he was it a "I love your show" but email? No, it was a. We, that would have been on brand for the kind of emails that we typically get. Albert, thank you. But what I got was something about. Let me just see if I can get it here. Um, where he grabs some new drops, and they're pretty great. I have to integrate them, and I particularly call on you because you are the keeper of uh, the drops that will make Mar uh, Mark's Madness coming up. He titles it The First Drops of the Year. This is from Trevor Starr in Hollywood. You remember, he was Trevor in Concord. Concord is a city in the East Bay of... Um, the San Francisco Bay Area, which is where the show was birthed. It was birthed in San Francisco originally. Mark, again, I apologize for my prolonged absence from my Mark Thompson show duties. It was wrong, it was stupid, and I'm trying to be a better person. Wow. He even talks in drops. That's what I like about Trevor. Wish I had the it was wrong, it was stupid drop ready, but I didn't realize I was going to have to be was wrong, um, it was stupid, and I'm trying to be a better person. Thank you, Albert. Apparently, I've been sitting on a drop that I never sent to you from the dearly departed uh, Mark Thompson show, Jim Avila. I also grabbed a nice little piece of 
advice from fabulous producer John Daly and a potentially very usable comment from, believe it or not, Alan Ludden. Enjoy. That's pure speculation. That is a drop. That's pure speculation. It's in there. So I have it somewhere. Um, and he always signs his stuff with uh, that's pure speculation. He's the only one who liked that. That's drop. pure speculation. There you go. That's the drop. So here is the Avala drop. There's and always been in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. <laughs> that is John. That is Jim Avala's drop from Trevor. And it's strong. There's always been in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. And so, uh, you know, the, what's great about that is I didn't hear that at the time, you know, as a drop. But Trevor did. And this is from John Daly, apparently. Uh, Maybe you'd like it if you were smoking weed. <laughs> All right. Maybe you'd that's, like that's, it if you were smoking weed. Maybe. Maybe. And then finally this, and he's right. This would be a good drop. I love it when you're angry. Uh, that, from I love it when you're angry. That's from, that's from Alan Ludden, who was a game show host from the old days. I love it when you're angry. Uh, Albert, I think that's super strong. Don't you agree? I love that, especially when um, maybe when Kim's like judging the yeah when Kim's losing the it hammer. like she always does yeah dropping the hammer you know what yeah. I I am so over Kim just going off the way she does you know what I mean how um she here's a Kim drop that was so uh, very you know what I've had it with you today that's you know what I've had it with you today yeah. you're feeling that way right have, now yeah. we might have a Trevor bracket and we might have a Kim bracket maybe, mm -hmm. maybe oh the... a Trevor and Kim bracket Albert mm -hmm. is thinking in terms of a far more exciting complicated and dynamic Mark's madness than ever yeah. before and then maybe I'm, a Mark bracket too like Mark's favorites and then maybe Albert's favorites too. I love those, it there's the never four, Never, There's never been, been anything, anything like, like this. this. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Very strong. All right. Anyway, uh, uh, thanks to the great Trevor in Hollywood for the, you know. For, I love it when you're angry. For these <laughs> super great drops. Really well cool done, stuff. Trevor. Yep. Smash the like button like a boss. Smash it with your iron rod. The thumbs up help us in the uh, algorithms of YouTube. Thank you for sharing the show and all that stuff. We'll get to Kim's news. And what else is happening today, Kim? Um, or Albert? Is there something in, else I need to do? In context of, well, there's... Uh, I've got a lawn our, disorder. I've got a lawn disorder oh, coming. Yeah, yeah, but is it. there anything else I need to do? We're not, we're no more guests, right? No, no more guests. Okay, no more guests. So this is really cool. We can luxuriate a little bit in our law and disorder as uh, we continue. So... Uh, Smash the like button. What else did I say? Uh, stick around. Kim's news and then uh, law and disorder and more. And can we get into some comments? Are you guys watching the comments? They have the comments all the way over here. I'll go through the comments too during Kim's news while I'm listening. Yeah, we have Kim's comments news. and also we have that uh, um, Hunter Biden video too that we did tease last Oh, yes. Hour. So we, okay, we good. So we've too. got Hunter. There's a lot going on. Wow. Good stuff. Mark Thompson. Show. <laughs> The Mark Thompson Show. It was great. I loved it. How would you handle this? We could try ignoring it, sir. Morning. You cannot say you love your country. Where are my weed smokers at? Stay at home and get baked. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister, and this report is sponsored by CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. Some breaking news right now. It's a, a big to-do up in the Sierra. There was a an avalanche at a ski resort right near Lake Tahoe. This happened this morning at a ski run at Palisades Tahoe. I think that used to be heavenly, right? Reports say active searches are underway right now. It is unclear if there were any injuries. More heavy snow is in the forecast through today. But again, they're dealing with a pretty serious avalanche situation at Palisades Tahoe. Oh, wow. TSA says a record number of firearms were found at airport airport security checkpoints in 2023. There he is. He's going to find it. He's digging in there. Yep. The agency says more than 6,700 guns were found by TSA officers. About 93% of those weapons were loaded. 
officers discovered most firearms at Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, the Dallas Fort Worth International Airport, and Houston's George Bush Intercontinental Airport. TSA Administrator David Pekoski says it's concerning to still see this many weapons at TSA checkpoints, especially loaded firearms that Gosh. present an unnecessary risk to everyone. Wow. Mm. Um, being corrected that it may have been Squaw Valley and not Palisades. So it looks like Squaw Valley is where this hap- the okay. uh, avalanche happened. So, yeah, we'll keep our eye on what's going on there and the process that they're making and searching for anyone that may have been injured. Dr. Anthony Fauci is not convinced that students experience learning loss due to school closures caused by the COVID pandemic. Wow. Mm-hmm. The former White House medical advisor told House lawmakers on the second day of closed door interviews on Capitol Hill today, Fauci answered 14 hours of questions from the House Select wow. Subcommittee. That's the, not fake. That's yeah, real. That's unreal. 14 about hours. About the pandemic. 14 hours. Yeah, he says he's not convinced that a learning loss due to school closures was caused by the pandemic. So. Wow. Well, I have to say that, um, look, What's been missing from, in my judgment, the COVID uh, response, the official response, what happened in this country, what happened with education, what happened with mask mandates, what's really missing is a comprehensive x-ray of it. It's been politicized. I get that. But we do need some kind of comprehensive report on what happened. We, I mean, th- th- this is not our last pandemic. We could learn a lot from this. I think there was a diminishment of both academic excellence and, you know, social adjustment in classes oh, that yeah. were canceled. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think that is close to indisputable. But these are the things that have to appear in a bipartisan report. And maybe Congress is the place to do it. But I, I only know what you're saying about this Fauci back and forth so far. I'll read more about it as we learn more from these hearings, but we do really need some kind of summary report from which we can not only gain knowledge, but new strategies and policies for the next pandemic. There is going to be another one. And by the way, as awful as this one was, the next one could be even tougher with far greater numbers of fatalities. Mm -hmm. We need to have our act together on this stuff. I think it's a front and center issue but that i'm i'm astounded that he is sort of taking this hardline position yeah it seems that most of us especially with children and who watch them do learning from home for a year and a, you know three quarters saw that there was some effect in at my house it was a social effect right you can't take a kindergartner who is supposed to be learning how to interact with peers how to co- solve conflicts how to handle themselves for kindergarten and half of first grade and have them removed from other children and the learning process there and not have some effect it seems obvious to me too but okay that's what they say artemis NASA pushing back on a crewed mission around the moon by nearly a year. Yesterday, it was announced that the Artemis II mission set for November is being pushed back to September of 2025. Its delay means Artemis III, which calls for astronauts to walk on the moon again, will also be delayed now until September of 2026. At the Mark Thompson Sports Desk. Yes, we have one of those. No, that's not it. Here it is. Yeah, Mark Tom- that looks about right. At the Mark Thompson Sports Desk, Pete Carroll will not be the coach of the Seattle Seahawks next wow. season. Wow. The team making the announcement today what? saying Car- Carroll will remain with the organization as only an advisor. Carroll's been the Seahawks head coach there since 2010, winning one Super Bowl and two NFC championships. Seattle finished with a 9-8 and eight record. They were eliminated from playoff contention on the last day of the season. Also from the Mark Thompson Show Sports Desk, yes. NFL Aaron NFL star Aaron Rodgers will not be making any more appearances on ESPN's The Pat McAfee Show. 
for the rest of the football season, at least. McAfee made the announcement today, a day after Rodgers appeared on the show to address the controversy surrounding remarks that he made about comedian Jimmy Kimmel. Last week, the New York Jets quarterback appeared to suggest that Kimmel would be named in documents related to the Jeffrey Epstein trafficking case. McAfee said some of Rodgers' thoughts and opinions upset a lot of people, and he is pumped that won't, that won't be a part of every single Wednesday of my life now. <laughs> okay. Ooh, it's a wild idea, but it just mm. might work. Kimmel responded to Rogers' original comments by threatening legal action, calling him a hamster-brained man. Yeah, I mean, the <laughs> other thing that Jimmy said was, um, look, if he apologizes to me, I'll accept his apology and move on. But the guy, you know, I, I, I don't know. Doubled down. Yeah. Doubled down on it. Seriously, man. Um, in other news, at the box office, Mean Girls is hoping to get off to a fast start. The reimagining of the teen classic is expected to make between 30 and $35 million over the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend. This film is based on the 2004 movie of the same name that starred Lindsay Lohan. My daughter's already making plans with friends to go see this one. Wow. Also debuting this weekend, the Jason uh, Statham led The Beekeeper. It's Statham. Is, Statham. Please, which is Statham. I, I Talks know. like this. Yeah. Jason Statham. The Beekeeper projected to bring in just under $20 million. Another movie making its debut, the biblical comedic drama The Book of Clarence, is expected to make under $10 million over the four-day holiday weekend. Wow. So, yeah. You going to go see any of those, you think? I Well, I love my Jason Statham. Mm-hmm. All right. I've got your, I've got your, your list. That's whatever the, whatever the F you want. He talks <laughs> like that. Uh, I loved him in a movie. My favorite Statham movie was, I think it's called The Bank Job. Check that out, Albert. I think The Bank Job, it's a true Google story it. about a bank heist in London. This is an absolutely true story. It's very Jeffrey Epstein-ish, too. Here's what happened. I'll tell you this just quickly. Aren't all Jason Statham movies, though, kind of the same? He's just yes, kicking ass. You're, you're probably right. I guess I like this because it was a true story. They break into this bank and safe deposit boxes, and one of the boxes has all this damning information related to SEX about the royals and about people who are high up in the British government. And there's a mobster involved, and there's the British official involved who's trying to get this stuff back so it doesn't ruin his career and of course they're then the thieves and just knocking over the bank and breaking into the bank you know it's a great heist kind of movie that way so there it is the bank job thank you albert very well done and i i recommend it but anyway so i like my jason statham he, albert thank I you i think he's a kind of shorter guy too kind of like it when short guys do well you know, like Tom Cruise's of the world. Yeah. You know, they're not super short, but just shorter, you know, and I'm always rooting for him. So uh, I think that would be my choice for the weekend. What movie is it again that he's in? Uh, the Beekeeper. Oh, the Beekeeper, right. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Don't All mess right. with the Beekeeper, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Looks, You don't know what he's wearing under the bee suit. Yeah. You remember this restaurant? Oh, sure. Anderson's yeah. Bee Soup. Anderson's Pea Soup. I just stopped there on my way to San Francisco uh, or my way back from San what? Francisco. Well, yeah, how, not too long ago. How fortuitous that you had a last meal there because... Oh, no. Last meal and fortuitous is a ding word. Oh, thank yes. you. Without warning, it shut down. Dying or a sucker. What? What? Yeah, it's in Buellton, California. Oh, my gosh. Right off of Highway 101. Oh. Thompson, has, party of four. I know. I have to cancel my reservation now. It's gone dark, and rumors are now all over the place that the property could be redeveloped for housing. Oh, it, who what is the that hell is going on in the United States of America? <laughs> It was oh, wow. previously listed for sale, the property, for just under $5 million in 2021. No buyer was ever publicly announced. Um, this place, Anderson's Pea Soup, serves 2 million cups of soup to travelers and locals every year. They can't and make things work on 2 million cups of soup? You would think. The signature of overpriced soup? soup? 
became their signature dish. So they, um, the name and it became the calling card for this restaurant, Anderson's Pea Soup. There's billboards leading up to it. I mean, it's a big thing, right? Yes, it sure yeah. is. This is this is big, big news. Why are you yelling? It really is big, big news. I don't so, know what to do. I'm, I would do endless. Yeah, we could try ignoring it. Sir. You can't ignore it. It's on the way to San Francisco or on the way back from San Francisco to right. Los Angeles. In between, it's the stop in between. And oh, it's, it's where they, I, they're I, saying I'm this. In... The closure is very sudden, and that it's going to be a shock to people that are used to seeing this restaurant or pulling off the freeway to go to it. And yes. they're going to go, and it's going to be dark with the doors locked, and that's it. This is, I'm going to need a minute. This is uh, really. No, you know, no, no. Thank you. Exactly. I'm not. Yeah. How much did they, when they tried to sell it, how much did they try to sell it for? I think it was five mil. Wow. Mm -hmm. Five mil. What can you tell us about the scene? The pea soup and Anderson's is going to be a thing of the past, Larry. What can you tell us about the scene? And will not be open anymore. What can you tell us about the scene? They're going to turn it into <laughs> housing, Larry, like everything else. Well, an update now on the avalanche. Uh, this at Palisades Tahoe in the Olympic Valley happened at 9.30 this morning. On the Palisades side, uh, the they give you the exact uh, ski run. GS Gully KT22 is where it happened. I, I doesn't mean anything to me, but if you ski, maybe it does to you. The patrol team was on the mountain searching for anyone who may have been trapped by this avalanche. Uh, avalanche. Both sides of the mountain remain closed for the remainder of the day. The first day today, uh, Wednesday, that that KT22 chairlift was opened. They call this ski lift the mothership because it gives you access to some of the most advanced runs out at the resort. So they were preparing to open it. They did open it today. That means people may actually be up there. So um, yeah, the search is underway. And again, we'll bring you any information that we get as we roll on here on the Mark Thompson show. This report is sponsored by Coachella Valley coffee.com. It is indeed a place to get a little bit of heaven in a coffee cup. Mmm, take a big sip. Mm. Oh, I love that. A little bit That's of that. right. And, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm drinking it right now. You Oof. should be. Mm -hmm. Got your Mark Thompson Show coffee mug. Got a little Coachella Valley coffee filling it up. Yeah, it's... Steam uh, coming off the top. It's literally the best coffee I've mm. ever tasted. Well, they have a give huge... it a Give it a... I, I would... Now, Kim is rocking the Moroccan. Uh, tea, Moroccan mint tea. Yeah, I she also loves like that. The ginger mint, the it, hibiscus tea. Fantastic. Wow. Love it. Yeah. I think that it's. Um, My daughter loves the chai tea. So good. Oh, yes. So uh, can't go wrong. Now the, the key is that you can order all these things that we mentioned and you can get 10% off. So yeah. do knock around the website. There are a lot of tasting notes on all these things. You can kind of get a sense of what you're getting before you order it. And then. You can even subscribe, you know, if you can, so if you're, you know, if you're going through coffee or tea on a regular basis, there are subscriptions available. It's CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. They're great friends of the show. I never thought they would be advertisers. It's really cool. And the code for 10% discount is Mark T at checkout. So bravo. Uh, yeah. I'm Kim McAllister and this is the Mark Thompson show. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Shadow Stevens. This is the Mark Thompson show. Keep it to yourself. Who's Mark Thompson? Yeah, Albert is here with Kim, myself, and you. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe to this show. Um, I believe we Match passed... with your iron rod. And do give us a thumbs up if you would, please. Uh, my new studio's configuration I do not like, but uh, because it keeps me from being able to easily see the comments. So I need you guys to help me with these comments. Like I try to star a few of them, but I need you to help me. Luxuriate is a ding word. I guess that was uh, ire is a ding word, says Tom. Um, these were comments that uh, came in in the last half hour. Um, the um, Dr. Fauci doesn't talk bs he's most likely right says doug hmm. mm. a second pea soup location in santa nella california mm -hmm. near los banos yep. uh says mrs m are you aware of that um yes mm -hmm. okay so uh nicely done and kim's on the pea soup beat 
Hey, I'm on yeah. the pea soup beat. Covering the pea soup. <laughs> Nothing comes between me and my pea soup. It's sad. I mean, that place, you know, and they had more stuff you could buy, like those little monogrammed or personalized license plates, everything like that, personalized. It was like a merch store, that entire spread of store that was adjacent to the restaurant. Yeah. They're at Anderson's. Kind of like a Cracker Barrel, Mark. Just Yes, just very Cracker Barrel. Yeah, yeah, before you get to the restaurant. Yeah. Well, I do kind of have some breaking news. What's that? that? A major announcement from the Mark Thompson Show. A major announcement. Unless you talked about it yesterday, but we did eclipse 19,000 subscribers. Wow. No, oh! we did, well, because we hadn't we hadn't eclipsed it yesterday. We were we were short of it. In fact, we lost a subscriber yesterday. Oh, the chat was messing with you, Mark. They were like, <laughs> oh, yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah. We are at, we are at 19,092 subscribers. <gasps> wow. Right now. That's very cool. Thank you, everybody who subscribed. We, oh, more than 100 in a day? Almost 100? Yeah. Wow. I think we could see with our um with our views and after every Tuesday it's always a bump because we do have that David K Johnston. David bump. K Johnston yeah. helps us enormously. I mention it on KFI Radio in Los Angeles, maybe we get some, you know, who wash over from there. Mm -hmm. But um I think Albert is essentially right. It's David K Johnston who's just so great. And um I wanted to acknowledge uh new Patreon subscribers uh, and more than even a new Patreon subscriber, JS just edited their membership from $10 a month to $20 a month. Are you kidding? Big shout big out. Shout out. Yeah, big shout out to JS. Um, you can do that. You can go in and say, hey, you know, I, I hope they stay on the air and I want to keep them in business, so I'm going to you know, step up and offer a little extra. We have both Patreon and PayPal. Maybe you can crawl that across the bottom, Albert. The um, address is the MarkThompsonShow.com. So you go to the Mark Thompson Show. That's your URL. You put in there the MarkThompsonShow.com. You can click Patreon or PayPal links. That's to be part of the community of people that contributes on a regular basis. And um, I really do appreciate um Lynn uh, is a big uh, Patreon supporter, and uh, uh, I also got, uh, just because I'm in the email, every time somebody jumps on Patreon and becomes a new supporter and part of the Patreon community, I get it. It hits my my phone, mm -hmm. and which is really cool. I always send back a personal note like a some kind of thing i mean it may not seem personal because there are only so many things you can say and so many ways to say thank you for supporting us but i write it you know a specific note to each person who joins our patreon and paypal i try to when i'm told about it i've just now begun sending emails out to some of the new um uh, members of our paypal community the paypal community is robust and important and all of you who are part of our paypal community Thank you so, so much. I mean, there are some serious supporters there for like $100 a month or for, it's a really, really cool. I'm not going to cry. Yeah. I'm not going to cry. That, the PayPal people could make me cry. They thank are you. really cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, thank so, you so, so much. Thank you so much. Um, but that's, again, both those hot links are at themarkthompsonshow.com. You can click Patreon or PayPal and go to either one of those places. Um but uh, we had a long email, remember, from P.T., mm -hmm. who, who was really uh, down on everything. Uh, Albert, were you here that day? I don't know if you were here, actually. But this... Um, it was actually a comment, right? In a it was a comment. Thank you. It was comment, a series yeah. of comments. That's right. It's still up there, I think. Um, so this comes from an avid fan who remains... Jeff is his name. And he says, um, I listened to you read a complaint from PT. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it just rubbed me the wrong way. I was listening to your show while working today. If you will indulge me just a bit to get to my point, I used to work nights. At the beginning of my shift, I would listen to John Rothman. My shift changed, and suddenly I'm working days. I tuned into KGO to sample the daytime fare. The Mark Thompson show became regular fare for me. 
by the way, if you're new to the show, this is how we began. This is so this is why this is sort of relevant to our origin story. We started on KGO Radio. I enjoyed the banter and the quirky drops, etc. Fast forward a few years, I'm listening to MT and Kim chatting. MT says, we need to do a little housekeeping. Ask Kim, are you ready to do this? And bang, KGO was gone. I felt like one of my best friends had passed. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Not the sudden uh, had a heart attack way, but even more tragic and shocking, like hit by a bus mm. kind of way. Yeah. Fast forward to today, Mark is, ready, uh, is reading another <laughs> derogatory email <laughs> from some listener who's either had too much coffee or not enough meds. And he just can't let it go. I've received a lot of positive letters. Mm. First and fore foremost, um, this is why the Mark Thompson show is top on my list and should be on yours. If you've ever been in the back room in a family-run business, you'd know it's normal to have family squabble. Hostile work environment. <laughs> my behind, he says. He says this is the, the kind of back and forth that we do is sort of normal in a family. Yeah. Yeah. Second, there is a huge amount of work that goes on before and after the show to bring you two hours of information and some levity every day. And did you ever stop to think that the bickering is part of the show? Thank you. Yeah. That is really well put. Yes. Uh, the bickering is part of the show. Can I tell uh, you something I'm really excited about? He's not like, done yet, Kim. Oh, Why are you yelling? I'm sorry. Gosh, unbelievable. Ch -ch -ch Kim is always there. Kim, how are you? She, I'm you, she, Why are she you hosted the red? show for a couple of weeks, and she just can't wait to edge me out. Take Third, I listen to a lot of podcast media, and I guarantee you that the Mark Thompson show, the most original show out there, it's first off, it's not unguested, confrontational, a format that a big fat blowhard invented in the 80s and is now a staple of both right and left leaning media. Mark has some great guests whose books you should buy and read and whose podcasts you might want to listen to the next time you want to fire off an email about a hostile work environment. Lastly and most importantly, Mark is a big deal. I'm glad we got to that part. I've forgotten about it. Mark is a big deal. deal. I yes. I'm kind of a big deal. Yes. I dare you to name another talk show, podcast, or TV show informs you and you can make, make you laugh without using straw men, specious, or solipsistic arguments, yes, two, two solid ding words. In closing, I'd like to say that occasionally I'd like to see some things done differently. Oh, we were doing so well there for a second. Oh, yeah, my there was the God. butt part. Yeah, there's there was the butt. The butt. Yeah. Yeah. But my name is not Mark Thompson, and I'm not an employee of the Mark Thompson show, so I keep my pie hole closed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should too, PT. Sincerely, an avid fan. Thank you very much, Jeff. Wow. When I was onboarding as a producer at KGO, uh, we had a producer named Brian Pelletier, and he Brian. would always tell callers who would complain about shows to, why don't you come in here and do my job? So that's what I yeah. always think of every time. Well, that was, there was the one day where Lori, who I love, she's a big supporter, but she's very particular. Um, she was giving us a hard time about something, and I said, Lori, why don't we just bring you into the meeting every day? So we, we will run everything that we do past you, Lori. And, you know, there is... Actually, not well, a bad idea. Yeah, I would have... Uh, I actually smart. happily would do... I'd yeah. happily do the show one day that Lori <laughs> produces. Right. I really would. That would be... That should be something we have a meeting about, a, a, some kind of contest where we let... We do a show produced by a listener or viewer. I How love that. You? That's setting the yeah. bar very... Yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, that may be something <laughs> along with the meet and greet that we, um, that we give you more details on in the days uh, ahead. Um, all right. So, uh, what were you going to say, Kim, before uh, oh, you were cut well, off by the know, host? The, the message, the um, commenter, the listener, viewer, <laughs> it's great. I'm game, Laurie says. Um, the viewer said that where what other podcast can you find such great books? I'm really excited to announce this. I just booked an author, a San Francisco police sergeant who's written a book about a crime. And there, this, you know, this is the uh, People magazine page where they have the best new books. And there it is at the bottom of the page called The Ascent. So we're going to talk to Adam Plantinga next week. And I'm really excited that we booked him on the show. I love it. Kim, mm -hmm. Kim how are you? With that booking, very strong. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, well, we are. 
we actually have some we have a really good uh, pipeline of people coming through here when it comes to the written word uh there are some other authors um there's a best-selling uh crime author who's coming through and his new book is called it has to do with the with a big case in amish country it's called the Am I, I Are you talking no. about Greg, Greg Olson? Yes, Greg Olson. Yeah. What's it called? An Amish something? Um, Look it up. Uh, check it. It's, Google it. It's really uh, good. And The Amish Wife. Thank you. Unraveling the Lies. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. it. And we yeah, just booked him. It. Yep, he's coming. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. he's coming. That's a great, and I, well, but you'll, you'll learn it. And Albert, Amish, thank you. I believe yeah. that, what's that, Albert? The oh. Amish Wife, Unraveling the Lies, Secrets, and Conspiracy that Let a Killer Go. Yeah, I mean it's it's actually it's a true story, and it's also the way he weaves it together in this book is really good. I haven't finished the book yet, but I'm reading it. The uh, thing I would say is that I've never been a fan of of the romance and aura around the Amish. I know that this is not a popular position, and I know that everybody loves the Amish and how sweet they are, and oh my God, how they reject modern technology and it's a simpler life. No, that's the Amish community is filled with serious scandal, a uh, scandal related to a uh, predatory SEX and uh, a community that protects the perpetrators of that. Uh, that's just some of the awfulness that occurs in Amish country, but there's a lot of that. So I don't mean to smear an entire people. I'm sure they're, you know, well-meaning members of that community as well, and maybe there are a lot of them. But mm -hmm. there, that is a community that's cloistered, isolated, and if you speak up against the patriarchy there, they aren't kind, and they will essentially excommunicate you. So it's cultish in that way. So uh, you can see where my bias is. I'm not super rah-rah Amish. Uh, we've done Amish stories. Remember the story we did about the Amish getting into cannabis and all that sort of thing? So... Uh, again, I try to give you the, the pluses and minuses and the, the world as uh, it really is, but Greg's coming in next week, and this is a really great story, and it comes out of, again, the world of the Amish, Amish country. Feel so, it in your soul. Yes. The, the Mark Thompson mm -hmm. Show. And That's fortunately for you, point. Mark, if whatever you say against the Amish, they probably won't hear it, so feel that, free to just... <laughs> That Feel is free a good to just point. The Mark Thompson Show. That's a good point. Albert, do you want to do some law and disorder here? What would you like to do? I also, before you commit, uh, I'd like to, and you can get that ready, I'd like to just mention what's happening at Lake Tahoe in addition to the uh, landslide there or the, the snow slide there, the avalanche that is uh, producing problems at what used to be Squaw Valley. Now it's called Palisades, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, uh, in addition to that, with this new storm, there's a huge cleanup underway at Tahoe. It's pretty gross. The first major storm of the year at Lake Tahoe brought more than just snow. It spread hundreds of thousands of pieces of polyst polystyrene into the lake. Yeah, uh, Albert will show you a picture of these plastic foam particles. They're called styrofoam, generally. The remains of a floating pier, probably, on the northeast side of the lake. You can see them there now. This pier broke in the worst possible area, apparently, possibly hitting a cement boat dock at Incline Village's ski beach. And then it continued to wash up against the cement dock and led the plastic foam dock to fall apart, sending up to 200,000 or more small pieces of polystyrene to wash up on Incline Village beaches. These kinds of beads, these styrofoam-like pellets, are brutal. It's the worst possible thing that people can create and use on the lake, mm. said uh, one authority. The Emergency cleanup is underway. You see how much, we're showing you pictures of it, how much territory is covered following the first snowstorm of 2024. They had 25 volunteers on the beaches who cleaned up particles the following day. Clean Up the Lake is a group of volunteers that primarily arranges cleanups managed by scuba divers, focusing on larger items that divers can collect by hand. The small size, there it is. That's the thing that broke up. This little mini dock. 
the uh, size so tiny of these polystyrene particles meant that the team has to come up with quick and creative new solutions, most of which were tested right on the spot. Like they went to the pet store, they looked at kitty litter scoops, um, they tried wet-dry vacuums. These white polystyrene particles blend in with patches of snow, so it makes the piles difficult to see. Anyway, the industrial vacuum couldn't collect particles trapped in the snow and sand. One volunteer said, I would guess that there were 100,000 to 200,000 or more oh, no. on that beach. Yuck. But there could still be between five or 15,000 of those little plastic beads mixed into the snow. Mm. And those brutal. can't be biodegradable, right? That's got to no, be. No, the styrofoam is like the least sitting there for biodegradable ever. thing. Yeah. Right. Anyway, bravo to clean up the lake, but they are going to have a lot of work in the coming months. Um, they work with the League to Save Lake Tahoe and Eco Clean Solutions. To and these are so many volunteers that do that work tirelessly up there. And you know, during the winter, these are pretty unforgiving conditions. It's cold. It's wet. Winds carry the debris about a third of a mile to the west reaching as far as the Hyatt Regency Lake Tahoe on the far side of Incline Village. But the same winds also deposited the particles 15 or 20 feet up on the shoreline, far enough out of the water that they wouldn't be carried back in. So in some ways, they're lucky that the styrofoam is lightweight enough to float away as, you know, as it's blown away. Anyway, this is a huge problem at Lake Tahoe, microplastics. We talked about it yesterday, microplastics and nanoplastics. It's just brutal. So um, that's the situation there. Albert, I wanted to update people on that, given the winter storm. Now, let's do some law and disorder. In the criminal justice system, the people... Pimps, addicts, thieves, bums, winos, girls who can't keep an address, and men who don't care... ...are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. A cop, a flatfoot, a bull, a dick, John Law, you're the fuzz, the heat, you're poison, you're trouble, you're bad news. These are their stories. By the way, Albert, did you tweet that we're on the air today or not? I actually did tweet. Did you really? Wow. Pre -show, it was a pre-show tweet that I was. I told Kim that I would lie on air and say I didn't tweet, but yeah. I did tweet, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty great. I, I meant to ask you that, of course, when you first went on. I will uh, retweet. Kind of late now with 12 minutes left in the show. It is. Yeah, you know. It is. I did yeah, mention well. that you can watch and replay, too, so, you know. Yeah, a lot of people, this, most of our, most of our viewers are in replay. That's true. That's true. Um, and uh, now, my friends, to the uh, sad news. Or is it good news? It's the good and the sad out of law and disorder. A man who escaped Pennsylvania jail by sliding down tied bed sheets. I got to say, that's a wild idea, but it just... Ooh, it's a wild idea, but it just might work. Yeah. Uh, he gets 25 to 50 years on kidnapping and escape convictions. That's right. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania County Jail last year was the scene of a man escaping. That's right. He tied those bed sheets together. They got out. Michael Burham. There he is. Young guy with a dream of freedom. Nope. Not so fast. <laughs> he was sentenced to three and a half to seven years in prison, specifically for his July escape from the Warren County Prison. But then... He was being held in part on kidnapping allegations. What happened was, he, and we think we told you this story, he climbed on workout equipment and he got out through the roof and shimmied down a rope of sheets. I'm going to ding shimmied. I think that that is a dingish. Shimmy, shimmy, shay. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was out. <laughs> um. And he was running. Burham, who authorities said had military reserve experience and survivalist skills, prompted an intense manhunt. You mm -hmm. may remember it. We reported on it here. More than 200 law enforcement officers. Your fugitive's name is Dr. Richard Kimball. <laughs> um, he was captured in a wooded area near Warren, Pennsylvania. He was jailed on charges related to allegations that he kidnapped an older couple in Pennsylvania, drove them to South Carolina while trying to evade a separate investigation in New York. This is a bad dude. He was on the lam for a while. 
Yeah, in the kidnapping case, the judge ordered a sentence of 21 years. Yeah. Uh, the two sentences taken together mean Burham has been ordered to serve from 25 years and two months to 50 years and four months. You know, once you get those 50 years in, the four months are the tough part. You know <laughs> what I mean? So uh, good luck to Mr. Burham. He was just born at the wrong time. I feel like the bed sheet's great move, but trying to escape in with all the technology and cell phones is kind of hard, but. Uh, agreed. Uh, very tough. An ATV daredevil took on the cops again, running from them on an ATV. He is 17 years old. He was arrested. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Officers spotted the ATV rider traveling near the 91 freeway in Southern California, Riverside County. He was standing on the seat doing wheelies, making hand gestures at police. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Do you see it there, Albert? Here, Albert's showing it to you now. You can see him on the ATV. Yeah. Down the kinda... freeway? No, it's wow. not a freeway, but it's a it's a you can see it's a four lane. It's a oh, yeah. three or oh, four. Oh hey, lane that's you can't turn from there. What? I guess you can. You can if you're in an ATV. Look at him go. Oh wow. He's having fun. Uh, the sheriff's department's off-road team eventually responded to the call. At one point, they had tracked this guy by helicopter. The 17-year-old was eventually arrested. He's been booked into a juvenile detention facility to avoid possible charges for felony evading. This brings me around to what I always talk about from time to time, which is the old ages that we apply to many of these. Now, this is, you know, again, you don't have to view this as a violent crime or anything like that, although yeah. you could argue that he's endangering public safety or whatever. Oh, totally. But I would just say that uh, totally. the 17-year-olds now, I, I wouldn't put them in, you know, I don't know. I don't see them as quite as juvie as they used to be. <laughs> if I can sound like an angry old man. I just think that uh, these this society and culture has evolved in a way that 17 year olds in general are they're adults they make a lot of adult decisions they make decisions mm -hmm. to take on the cops to steal stuff to kill people uh, obviously i'd like to see the underpinnings of their development helped mm -hmm. with after school programs and a lot of facilities to really enable a lot of these kids to realize potential that doesn't involve you know mayhem or craziness but i think when those members of society who are 17 so that mayhem and craziness they have to be looked at in a different way and i think we still see them as kids and they are on some level but well their brains aren't fully cooked right, right. but in yeah. depending on how many months at 18 all of a sudden we consider them fully cooked so yeah. they're somewhere close to fully cooked mm -hmm. a boyfriend of a woman who died falling off a cliff during a proposal is arrested maybe it wasn't such a proposal after all kim <laughs> no not the kind of proposal you're looking for i propose that you die and that i leave <laughs> yes him demir's family said that she was planning on ending things with her boyfriend she would have declined his proposal and the opportunity to marry him what led investigators to realize that it wasn't a marriage proposal was evidence of a struggle. Uh-oh. She fell 100 feet. But prior to that, there was evidence of a struggle. There the two of them are. And Nezametin Gursu was taken into custody five months after his girlfriend, Yassim Demir, plummeted to her death in Turkey. This happened over the summit. Over the summer, I should say, Turkish news outlet Birgun reported that the chief prosecutor's office is charging him with deliberate murder. Oh, he Gersu pushed her off the cliff? Gersu told cops that he went to get a celebratory picnic basket from his car after Demir, who is 39 years old, accepted his sunset marriage proposal. He rushed back to the site with the picnic basket to celebrate, you see, Kim. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and he heard her scream and saw her laying at the bottom of the cliff. Sure he did. She was pronounced dead 45 minutes after medics tried life-saving efforts. During the investigation, though, police say they found evidence that indicated Demur actually turned down Gersu's marriage offer with the engagement ring still inside a box, inside the suspect's pocket. Shattered glass and a broken music speaker also recovered from the proposal spot, indicating an alleged struggle. According to a criminal complaint, again, this is filed against the groom-to-be. They say that Demir's death was not an accident, but murder. And they also, family members say, that Demir was planning on ending things with Gersu, would have declined the opportunity to marry him, and that may have been what provoked her being pushed off the cliff to her sad end. That is the sad end to law and disorder. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Hold on. I'm ready. Tune in again next time for more Law and Disorder on The Mark Thompson Show. All right, that's it. Let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out there. It had to be and that uh, Albert seemed a little too together today. You know, he had actually tweeted and... Uh, he hit the law and disorder right on time. Albert, thank you. I dragged that bar right back down. Mark. You did. Thank yeah. you for delaying on that. Uh, maybe when you post this, you can... Uh, we post law and disorder. We drop it as a separate video. Maybe you can cut out that little uh, that little lag, Albert. You know yeah, I mean? little, uh, yeah, little magic uh, that I can... Yeah, I'm thinking do. about for you, for future job opportunities. You don't want people <laughs> to see that. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, the end of this show brings... Uh, Two things. One, I want to thank Wes, who shoots us a $5 super yeah. sticker. Big shout out. Big shout out to Wes. Really appreciate it, Wes. We're a crowdfunded show, so appreciate it. And Gary Ryan, glad I discovered the show. There's a 10 spot. Big shout out. Big shout Welcome, out to Gary. Gary. Glad yeah. you discovered the show. Nice. All of you newcomers, thank you for being here. Spencer Jaffe is not a newcomer. He is Big shout out. a really great supporter of ours. Appreciate it, Spencer. And Edward Lee, what would it take to get Tim Conway Jr. on here? Uh, asks uh, Edward in a super Big chat. Big shout out. I will ask him again, you know. Has, here's did what he, I th did he here's turn you down? No, here, well, here's what I think the reality is for Tim. He's very good about, you know, promoting the show and letting me promote it on KFI and, you know, sure. get a good uh, mention in. But I think, this is what I think. He hasn't told me this, okay? So, but this is, I can be honest with you and the listeners. Yeah. I think the show's a little political for him. Like, he oh. tries to be apolitical, and we're mm -hmm. kind of political. You know, politics is really um, at the center of a lot of what we do. You know, sure. we come out of KGO. We come out of uh, issue-oriented radio and talk radio. I bring on people who I think have really great takes. I bring on journalists and authors. Oftentimes, those journalists and authors have takes on many things related to politics. And I think politics is really important. Mm -hmm. I also think we're at an inflection point in this country's evolution, and I'm not going to change that, right? So I'm not going to change you know, the centerpiece of so much of this being politics. But to be fair to Tim, I think he doesn't oftentimes want to get on a show that maybe some of his listeners may not dig on because, yeah. you know, it's too political, whatever. So I give Tim a pass, but I will ask him. Uh, I love him. He's like a family member. If know? he doesn't talk about politics, what does he talk about? Now, there's a lot of other stuff you can talk about. I mean, you, right. you there really is. And he rubs up against politics also a bit. Okay. But, um, uh, you know, look, his show's number one in uh, Los yeah. Angeles and Afternoon Drive. So he is a, he's a brilliant uh, personality, and he is – able to talk about any number of issues and local issues too that in a way are political as well but i'm talking about national politics and sort of the national tribalism that's taken over i think he doesn't want to get into that i think that is that is nothing more than pure speculation where's the um uh pure speculation uh i have to bring the pure speculation drop back the um uh, that's pure speculation there you go yes <laughs> that's a, and he he actually sent the another message three minutes same exact message another two dollars uh, another two dollars thank oh, you edward wow. lee that's pure speculation uh, all right a big, big shout, shout out. out and uh pure speculation as to uh, whether or not we can get that's him. pure speculation. i'll try to get him of course i will and we will uh we will fet him we will celebrate him 
Kim, how do you feel as this show winds down and you have your after party live show to I do? I wonder, do you have a, is it a sense of anticipation you have? I feel pretty good. And we'll do it live. Uh, yeah. yeah, do you? I, yeah, I feel at peace. I'm calm. You, you get excited because you don't have to wait for somebody else to stop talking for you to start talking. You can, <laughs> it's your show, right? Yeah, no, no. After- no, I have a partner. John Daly's my partner. Yeah, but it's really yours, isn't it? I mean, no, come on. No, no. No. <laughs> what are you trying to stir up trouble? Uh, we'll do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. The first few minutes of the After Party Live is used usually to make fun of something that I've done. So I oh, hope I've given it that. You're Albert, part of it, too. Uh, tomorrow, it's David Katz. We'll talk about the Supreme Court. We'll talk about Donald Trump. We'll talk about presidential immunity and more. All of that tomorrow with the great I'm David Sheriff Katz. Stevens for the Mark Johnson Show. Bye-bye. Also, it's the Planet Stupid with Belinda. We talk environment Long tomorrow, time. too. Bye-bye. Tomorrow's show is going to be great. Thanks, everybody. Till tomorrow. Bye-bye. 